Hey guys, Randy here from Yeep Life. Thank you for tuning in to the channel. And if you have not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the like button and also the bell button so you can get updates when we post and upload videos. Now on today's episode, we are going to install a lift kit. Now the lift kit that we chose, we went with the Metal Cloak 3.5 inch Game Changer Edition with the Rock Sport shocks. So it's going to be a lot of fun in the garage guys. I can't wait to show you what's in the trunk. So let's get started. <laughs> Before we get started on the upgrade, I wanted to capture some video of the Jeep JL Rubicon so we can treasure the memories that this little red box took us on the first year we had it. There were plenty of trails this Jeep took us on, from bombing through the desert to water fording through deep and extended water crossings, to crawling rocks in the San Bernardino National Forest just to go look for a water sinkhole and spectacular campgrounds in the Lake Arrowhead area which was definitely a hidden gem. We even explored the Eastern Sierra for some great and amazing camping area and climbing deep rutted and dug out hills. This Jeep can do a lot stock, but like 90% of Jeep owners, what do we do when we get a Jeep? Get it lifted and put on bigger wheels. Ta-da! Okay guys, so I just finished unboxing uh, just to check to see if I got every part and surely enough I did. Uh, so that's a good thing. So we're going to get started. Uh, excuse the background. Uh, I know it's a little messy. It's my garage. I really haven't done anything much to it but just threw away all the junk and just kind of left it there. So uh, let's put all the parts on the floor. Uh, I will tell you what the kit includes and what it all comes with. And uh, it's very beautiful just to even look at. So. Let's check it out. Alright, let's just see what they sent us in the box. Okay. Some rare coils. Front coils. Alright. Track bars. Front and rear, looks like. Upper and lower control arms. Okay, looks like uh, rear bump stop extensions. Okay, front bump stop tucks for the front. Awesome, the uh, Rock Sport shocks. Looks like the uh, sway bar links. like some shock mounts for the uh, lower control arm and the uh, isolator Before we do the lift, we're going to take a current measurement of what our current lift is on this JL. Uh, that's just to keep tabs on what it is now and when we do the modification and do the lift upgrade, we're going to see how many more inches we're going to get out of it. So to do this guys, you're going to take a tape measure and you're going to measure from the center of your wheel hub to the bottom of your fender. Okay, so I got 22 and a quarter here. Okay, on the rear of the wheel, I'm getting 23 inches on this side and on the opposite side as well. So measuring the sliding rail from the ground up, I'm getting 17 inches to where it touches the bottom of the rail. Here are some of the tools you'll be needing for the install. A socket wrench, a hammer, some crescent wrench, impact wrench, a power drill, a step bit, a screwdriver, a mallet, a crowbar, some hand gloves, a flashlight and a headlight, a ratchet strap, 
some jack stands, a torque wrench, some spring compressors, a floor jack, a hex key allen wrench set, a Dremel, and most importantly, a 20 pack case of Budweiser. Okay guys, so before we do the uh, sway bar disconnect install, I wanted to address something. Uh, Metal Cloak will send you a pair of front and rear sway bar disconnects. Now they look the same, they look almost identical, but the way you differentiate the two uh, is that the ones to be used for the fronts, the bolt is usually longer than the ones to be used for the rear. So before you make the mistake of installing them, and just to save you some time, uh, I just wanted to point that out. So we're gonna start this install from the front and then work our way to the rear. Now it's recommended if you have a lift in your garage to go ahead and raise it up, work from the bottom up. Uh, however, I'm a poor guy, so uh, the only thing I'm gonna use is a uh, floor hydraulic jack. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll be using a pair of jack stands for this install. Now safety is always first guys, I also recommend that you guys use a pair of gloves as well. So just comparing the uh, front coils, the uh, stock Rubicons come with these coils and here's the metal cloak coils in the front. A lot more sexier and higher. Next we're going to work on the upper control arm. We're going to go ahead and remove that and install the one from Metal Cloak. And uh, I like to do the upper control arms first because uh, that way we can uh, rotate the pinion a little bit, make things a little bit more easier. So let's get started on that.
and now do the same for the opposite direction. So next we want to move the uh, bolt from the upper control arm. Now there is a flag nut in here so we just have to get underneath with a uh, 18 millimeter wrench and uh, get this guy out. Okay underneath there's a uh, heat shield here so we just gotta move it aside and uh, get to the bolt here and uh, get this guy out. Alright I think we got the arm loose there. Okay. So here's the comparison with the uh, upper control arms. Uh, metal cloaks a little bit more beefier than the stock Rubicon ones. So metal cloak wants you to adjust the upper control arm for the JL about 19 and 3 fourths inches um, from eyelid to eyelid. So from the starting point here to right there. And I have it at about 19 and 3 fourths of the way. So we're good to go. Okay, we'll next get back in the 18 millimeter bolt for the control arm. What we just did on the left side, we'll apply the same concept on the right side. Word of advice, always wear eye protection because just underneath there I got dust all over my eyes. And now we just get this guy tightened up. So we're going to remove the lower control arms, but before we do so, we have to take out this nut bolt. Uh, this is so the brake lines uh, will have some slack and won't get in the way. Easy peasy. Now we got a lot of play. Remember to save all hardware guys. Okay, now we'll get the bolts off on the lower joint. Okay, in removing the lower control arm and putting it side by side with the metal cloak lower control arm. Uh, metal cloak wants us to set from eye to eye, left to right, 24 inches. Uh, now that's what's on the uh, original stock lower control arms as well. So we have to keep that a match. All right, now we'll just get the uh, left control arms in. So we're getting the uh, bottom joints in. Okay, so I haven't fully tightened the front. And reason being is because uh, we're gonna work on the other side, the reverse side, I'm sorry, the opposite side, uh, and get that guy tightened first. And we're just gonna let this uh, 
loose for now, but just have the bolt in place just in case we have to work with the uh, coils and getting that coil in there. It's going to be tight. Okay, with a uh, 15 millimeter socket, we're going to remove this bolt off of the uh, lower control arm. That's the uh, bolt holding on to uh, all the brake lines here. Bolt is off. Twenty-four millimeter hand wrench on one side. Twenty-one millimeter socket wrench. We're gonna take this bolt off. Just gonna leave this bolt here for now, so we won't move it. Now we'll get the bolt out from the lower control arm. Okay. Remember guys, save all hardware. We're just gonna put this uh, bolt back in for now so we won't lose it. Just kinda set it there. Okay, where we have the bolt rest at first, we're just going to put in the uh, arm. And tighten it for now. Okay, we're doing the same for the uh, lower joint. All right, we're gonna tighten the bolt, 21 millimeter socket. Now we're gonna get the bolt in the uh, lower control arm. Next, we're going to install coils and we're also going to create a uh, half inch hole in the center here. Uh, the JL model already has a small little hole that you can work with here. So we're going to uh, use a uh, step bit and we're going to drill a half inch hole in the spring perch here. And this is so we could uh, put in the uh, uh, pucks, the uh, bump stop pucks. There, that's about a half inch hole in the spring perch. Uh, that should do the job. Okay, next we're gonna get the isolator in. Okay. Get that nice and snug. Next we're gonna work with installing the spring coils. Now, the best method is usually to remove the drive shaft. Uh, that way we can get the axle to uh, fully droop. Makes uh, life a little bit easier uh, stuffing in the, uh, the metal cloak spring coils here. Uh, but since I have a uh, spring compressor available, we're just going to go with that option. We're now going to allow the axle to droop uh, on the left side, so take extreme precautions here because there's fragile parts like brake lines and uh, breather hose tube for the, uh, for the axle, so we got to be careful we don't tweak any of that, so we'll do it slowly. Okay, now I'm not going to push it to the limits. That's the uh, most I'm going to allow for it to droop for now. Okay, I think we got the axle drooped down enough to where we can try to fit these in. Now, when it comes to putting in the coil spring, guys, take extreme precaution because, uh, you know, th these things have a lot of tension and a lot of pressure. So don't f around with these because this could take out your head. So 
we're just going to go ahead and put them in. There you go. Okay, it's a little bit right now. We're just gonna have to uh, put it in place and uh, just make sure, guys, that you uh, position the coils in the uh, axle base here, the coil base, I mean. Uh, make sure it touches that. Okay, okay, so that's good in place. Now we're just going to take out these coil spring compressor. Now again, uh, use extreme caution here. Uh, these things are still under a lot of tension, so make sure you're still wearing your eyewear and uh, gloves as well. Hard day's work calls for a good old bottle of suds. Nothing like a good old fashioned American beer. Cheers. Okay, now we're working on the right side, the front right, and we're going to get that axle to droop. This side should be a little bit more easier than the other side, so I don't think we'll need a spring compressor to get the, uh, the coils in. We'll get the isolator in. guy in there nice and snug okay I was wrong guys look like I do need a uh, spring compressor for this guy uh, so I got them on there let's get these guys in And now we'll just have to take off the spring compressor. Boy, let me tell you, these spring compressors are a lifesaver. I mean, I, I don't think I could have done it without them. I forgot to mention, guys, you can actually borrow these from... Uh, AutoZone, they actually have a loan program to where you leave a deposit and you could uh, actually borrow them and keep them for 90 days. Tell them Yeep Life sent you. They might say, when's that broke mother are gonna buy some of these, but anyways, just tell them Yeep Life sent you. All right guys, so we got the coils in, the right side and on the opposite side and the left side as well. Uh, now for today, we also completed the upper control arm and the lower control arm as well. We got the sway bar disconnects off now uh, we're gonna wrap it up for today it's getting kind of late 8 p.m here 90 ish degrees or so in southern california uh, i'm getting tired and a little buzz so we'll wrap this up today and uh, we'll start fresh tomorrow <laughs>